If I get that creep, creepo again, I'm gonna block him right away. I figured out how to do it last so. week. Okay, it's fine. Oh, no, it's okay. Great. It's, it's. But. There's no I'm audio. I'm gonna wait until um, it's near because we need to wait till everyone's on that wants to be there before we start talking. Okay, it's fine. Oh, it just it uh, turns itself off. Um, Do we need a hit?
Allie goes. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks for waiting. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes here. Um, it is an absolutely beautiful day here in Portland, Oregon. I hope it is there where, where, where you are, wherever you are. I see a lot of people from all over the place. Netherlands, France, Seattle, all over. So thanks, thanks for joining me. Welcome to my studio. Um, so today, let's see. I'm doing a little happy dance right now because I, I have some kiwi in my yard that I planted about four years ago and so far I haven't had any fruit and I went over there today and it's just starting to bud out and I have fruit so I'm so excited I'm going to have lots of kiwi this year so that's, 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 my, that's my happy thing today. So I'll take that. What else is going on around here around the studio? Oh, um, doing some cooking, doing some yard work. I have some moles. <laughs> so they're keeping me company. So that's really cool. Um, what else? Um, yeah, doing a little bit of painting, working on lessons, working on watercolor sketching workshop. So that's super fun. Um, just want to give a little shout out like I always do to my team, Kevin and Rudy. Thanks to you guys so much for um, helping me out and um, doing a great job. And I also wanted to do a little shout out today to um, some friends. Um, Terry Ludwig, Terry gave me a call the other day. I so appreciate it. And um, Terry and his crew, they are uh, still fulfilling orders. And I, they don't, they don't pay me or anything, but they're, they're my buddies, and so I just want to let you know that you can still get pastels from Terry. Also, Dakota Pastels in Mount Vernon, Washington, they are also fulfilling orders, and touch base with them, too. So, um, yeah, so go out there and, and get some supplies if you need them. So that's really, really great. And what else? I wanted to um, say a big, big thank you, especially to my mom. Because my mom, some of you have met her at the IAPS convention. Uh, we've gone together to that several times. Um, my mom is a retired library administrator. And um, so right now, I, we can't see each other, which is really a little, um, it's too bad, it's uh, um, hard. But um, she I put her on a project for me to find some kind of a little bit obscure books and so little by little they've been coming in and yesterday I received in the mail this absolutely um, amazing book by Frank W. Benson and I, um, I'm blown away by this work, absolutely blown away and what's so amazing to me about his work is that the diversity of subject matter did these absolutely beautiful oils also um, these etchings uh, crazy beautiful lots of them and not only uh, media but different subject matter I mean it's I'm just blown away by this there are the watercolors oils etchings um, so if you are not familiar with his work um, I would I would look at it so mm, there's just it's amazing 
the portraiture. It's just great stuff. So thanks, Mom. Doing a good job. <laughs> yep. And I've been also spending a lot of time, in, especially in the evening, when it gets a little, little bit lonely, maybe a little bit boring, I've been spending time sketching and drawing. And um, the other thing that came in the mail, it's thank goodness for, for our mail carriers and people that are bringing us stuff, right? I had worked on this. This is a pentallic sketchbook. And I've been working in this, uh, and I love this sketchbook. I love the paper. I love the weight of it. I love that it's a landscape proportion. It's just, just nice, you know. It's just really nice. Um, and I, but I filled it up, and so I uh, was like, okay. <laughs> so I ordered a couple more of them, and because I'm really looking forward to planting my my little veggie garden. So that's um, really cool, and I just. Um, find this watercolor sketching really meditative and it's amazing. So my um, watercolor uh, sketching workshop is going to be coming soon. We're just finishing up the, the, the finishing touches on it and so that'll be coming. I'm really happy to be bringing that um, to you guys. Now, some of you noticed that today I have this beautiful piece of terracotta color fix up here on my board. And I had put in the description that I was going to be using leaf green, or no, that I was going to use pastel mat. This, this, but I had this out here this morning. I came out here this morning, and this was up on my easel, and I realized it's not big enough. There's just not enough real estate for this particular image. Um, I wanted to. Um, yeah, I wanted, I wanted a little bit more, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, so the reason this terracotta is up here is because that's what I have left in my drawer. And that's the only reason. There's also this lovely sort of orange foliage in the middle and this warmth in the foreground, war warm light in the background. So I'm going to make it work. Um, and I know that some of you want to follow along, um, so it's not going to be exact, but um, sorry. <laughs> it's a last minute, um, last minute decision. Um, so today, rather than a formal lesson about what I'm doing, I've decided that I really want to just um, paint more today, that I'm going to just have it be a little more free-flowing. You're welcome to ask questions as I'm painting, and some of those questions we'll try to get to today, and if I don't get them today, I will do another video that's answering the, the, the questions that you asked during the live stream. So that's the reason for that. So let me just, before I begin, I do want to talk about this kind of imagery. So this kind of imagery maybe doesn't have so much a, a, a focal point, like some of these kinds of things, like this might have more, may, maybe here. I think that the, this photo in a certain way has a focal point kind of in here, that the, the, the sort of uh, movement of the piece sort of winds up here, um, right about here, which kind of is right about on the, in the, on the thirds of this piece. So I think it's going to work out. Even this dark uh, pine sort of um, brings our eye into, into this center point here. So I think that that'll work out compositionally. Again, um, if you guys watched, what I th was it the last live stream? Anyway, I'm working on just personally in my, in my work, working on getting more movement gesture in my paintings, so maybe exaggerating some of this a little bit, I think, would be cool to do. I love that the, these, uh, the tree trunks, I think they're aspens. Somebody out there probably knows. It looks like they are. The, the coolness of them against the warmth, another reason why I think this will work. Um, they're sort of purplish, bluish. 
Um, so I, I think that's really interesting. So that's what I like about this other than you know it's just beautiful <laughs> it just really is it's lacy it's complicated it's just pretty so I'm gonna tackle it today um, and so you're welcome I'm gonna put my hair up so you can see it better I think um, yeah let me see I need a hair band I need, yeah. Oops, sorry, Kevin. Kevin's got to go run and get me a hairband and move a bunch of stuff to do it. Sorry, I thought I had one. Um, okay, yeah, so the first thing that I'm going to do is get some of these, some of these tree trunks in here with my blue spruce. And I'll try to stay out of the way so my hair's not in the way. And... I'm just going to set some of these in here really loose and to get me into the, now I want these to be angled and more gestural in opposition to the straighter ones. So these, these only appear at an angle, thank you, um, in contrast to the straight ones. So I need some straight ones to tell something about these more angled ones. And I also want to think about the intervals of these. So because I think something like this is all about these intervals of the trees. It's like music, right? So music, you don't want if, if I had all my trees lined up evenly, it would be, not only would it be boring, it would be more formal and man-made. It would also, it would just, music doesn't go like this, right? And even be, da, 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 it has more um, melody, more different kinds of intervals. So the same thing goes visually. Get my hair out, out of the way here. So now here's this little gap that feels like it's the focal point. There's some dark trees that kind of come up into it. And then, then these kind of straight ones here. And then just the... the kind of clusters, how, how are they grouped? I don't need to have all of them in here. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not trying to paint this exact. Here there's a bunch that are together. And then I have my, where do I want this pine to come in here? I think I already want it. So I need to get this out of the way just a little. Oop, I don't want to do that. There. And there's a, a couple that are coming back behind this. That's kind of neat. So there are these layers. And then there's this. I want to tell myself where I want some of this interesting colorful foliage in here in the foreground there's this beautiful nuanced uh, kind of gr uh, gray grade more neutral thing here there's these kinds of things i just want to i'm putting some things in to remind me what i want now that feels like it's right in the center it's not in the center so I, I think it'll be okay. Now I want to go ahead and just get an idea of where I want some of this foliage to be. And some of these marks are really just kind of tick marks for me. I, they don't have any meaning really other than just a reminder for me. Back in here, here's this. This. 
So I'm doing some things just for my own. Uh, it's not really going to wind up in the final piece, but I need to find my way, right? I need a few things to, to help me out. So I'm going to get this a little darker also just to help me out. This is in here. All right. That's nice. It has, hmm, it has something. Okay. Now I want to, I'm going to go ahead and get some foliage in. Now that foliage, it's so pretty. It's, it's, it's really, it's really green. But it's also turquoisey and silvery and, you know, the soft shadowy lights hitting it. So I want to play with that. Um, I'm, I want to start with something. So I'm, I'm going to... Uh, that's what am I going to start with? I'm going to start with not that either. I I can't decide this and the turquoise. All right, I'll do this. I just want to drag something in here to get this foliage mass established. Light, it's light. I'm not feeling the tooth. I'm not anywhere near feeling the tooth because I'm, I want other layers. I want to be able to get the tree trunks in over the top of this. Again, I might have bit off way more than I can chew, but we'll see. So I'm going to Bring, this isn't exactly the right hue, but there's something about it that I like, and it seems to be about the right value, so that's good. Now I'm going to switch to something a little um, warmer, this over here, and down here. And... Um, then back here, there's something that is grayed and in the distance. And I'm going to put this down just again as a reminder to self. And some of this, just a first pass at where I want things. Yep. Um, can you comment on how one might best select the value over the hue of pastels? Steve says, I found I get lost with misplacement of the correct value and it causes my paintings to look flat. Okay. Does that the, make sense? Yeah. So the question is, how do we choose value over color? Um, because he gets lost. Um, well, that, so one, one way to do that is to whatever your reference photo is to um, make a black and white um, version of it so you can you know most accurately more accurately see it um, you have to start somewhere you have to put something down so right now right now I don't know whether this is right because I don't have enough in here yet to determine that so I have to start somewhere, so I'm going to. Um, uh, I have to start. And from there, because value, just like hue, is, it's all about the relationships. Now I'm going to go ahead pretty quick here and get something in for this light in the background. Um, and then I'll have a better idea whether any of this, that I, which is pretty much of a mess right now, if any of it's anywhere near what I need.
Another question? Okay. Okay, I have another one. Um, this is from Rebecca. Uh, have uh -huh. you ever made a monochromatic pastel painting, and would that be hard to do? And Rebecca is my wife. Oh, hi, Rebecca. <laughs> um, yes, I have. I have done that, and no, it's not hard. No, you just, you know, you could just pick a, a, a range of uh, the way I have my palette set up, it's, you know, perfect for that because I could just go th up my palette and choose um, a series of sticks that are in the value range that I want. Okay, so I'm going to come in here with this. It's, this is a light purple and decide whether this is at all kind of in the ballpark for the and it, I feel like it kind of is. Okay. Here Debbie asks, um, or she says, she struggles with green. And then she says, you should do a lesson on just green. <laughs> I have done many lessons on just on green, on using green. Um, yeah, greens are tough. But the thing about greens is you can always substitute them. You don't have to use green. You can use, you know, this, this. As long as you have the value relationships right, it doesn't matter what color. This could be pink trees. It could be purple, purple foliage. It could be orange foliage. Obviously, we have orange foliage. So um, we don't have to, have to be married to the idea that we're you know, going to paint in, in green. Let me get a little bit, before I take any more questions, I want to get a little idea of what some of these tree trunks are going to be so that um, I have a little bit more idea of if I'm on track. So this is a, a, a kind of a soft um, grade purple, at least to start. I'm going to get something a, a little bit darker for this one. In, in here. Okay. What do we got? Another question would be um, about uh, Steve asks on the monochromatic mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm. uh, would you suggest a monochromatic painting would be a good exercise in identifying the value spectrum? Absolutely. Yeah. So values, um, they're, if you think about values, if we don't have value, difference, contrast, we can't see anything. Nothing would have, because you can um, actually, uh, you know, people are colorblind. You can actually see stuff in the visual field uh, without any color uh, difference. But you can't see anything without value. So, um, so I'm just getting a few things in here to help me out to kind of, because I need to go a little faster. And um, I, this foreground, it needs to be in shadow even though, even though it's this kind of light, I want to. I want to feel that this is all in shadow here. So I'm just going to move pretty quickly through this, just so I can get some things down. So I'm just blocking this in. That's all I'm doing right now. And if I'm on my own painting by myself in the studio, I'm, I'm going at least this fast in this initial stage because I want to get this established as fast as I can. Because the faster I see it all coming together as a unified whole, the faster I can start um, um, really you know, finding my way to the to the finish line, whatever that is. <laughs> okay. 
I want to get um, this center part. It's looking kind of messy right now. That's okay. This is too light. I can see that right now. It needs to be more like this. About the value of the paper. Let me get, I need more of my, my trees in here now. I might have a big mess at the end of this. That's okay. I absolutely think it, I, I, when I do these demos and I, I think it's almost unfair for me to come in here and do something that I'm like 100% sure of. Um, I, I, don't, I don't need to do that. Um, I don't need to show you how well I can paint. Um, or that I'm going to be, or that I'm going to be successful every single time. Because it's not... <laughs> It's just not true. <laughs> okay, I've got all these over here, a whole bunch of them together. And they're doing all kinds of fun things. Oh, that tells me I need to be a little bolder over here. A little more broken over here. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, now now I need a little darker over here. And then I got I've got to get that sky in because still, even now I don't have any idea about the value because I don't have the sky in. And so I've nothing really to truly uh, tell me ab ab about the value relationships that I've got set up so far. There's nothing, nothing really there yet. Um, so, I, in my photo, my sky is really, really light. And so I'm going to use this light, light yellow. Do you know the name of the color uh, in the blue tree trunks? No. I don't know the name of the color of the tree trunks. You guys, I do not know the color names of any of the sticks that I use. Um, and I know it's frustrating to some of you guys that um, for that because um, you know you want to be able to um, to to do it um, um, maybe like I'm doing it. But if I were to you know remember the you know, maybe there's some art pastelists that do know all the color names of the sticks they use, but I don't. Um, so the thing um, that I do to keep track of my pastels as I buy the charts so that I can um, a little bit keep track of stuff. So now I'm just kind of picking out some lights. Now already just that has done a ton of work for me, right? Because now I have a, it, it ha it's starting to have that quality of light, it just, you know, I can feel it a little bit. And once I can feel it a little bit, then I'm off and running. And it truly is, it, it's, it's um, I can't say, I can't really put my finger on it. It's really just a feeling. It's not anything um, more than that. So in here, there's some warmer bits. 
So here's another question. Um, why don't you do the sky first? Um, it, well, in this case, the sky is, um, is sort of, it's a small um, shape. It's not, it's not, it's not, it doesn't, it's not a, a very, a, uh, so I'm, what I'm always, I'm trying to, I'm trying to paint and talk <laughs> and think, um, which is never <laughs> really fruitful. Um, uh, so I always am going to start with the biggest thing that I can. I want to really establish the thing as a whole, as a unified whole, as quickly as I can. And so I want to start with the biggest stuff. And in this case, the sky is not the biggest stuff. Um, I want to get, see, I put a little bit of the sky, so now I've got a little bit of all, pretty much all the, the range of things that I want. So now I can kind of see where I'm at, um, and that's good. But I don't. I only need a little bit of it, and now I can kind of find find my way through the thing. And already, I'm getting that little sparkling light. It's nice. It's fun. I can get the full. And I don't want to get the sky in behind this foliage. I want to plan for these foliage masses because if I, if I get, got the sky in and tried to get the foliage real thick in and then tried to get the, the sky over the, I mean the, the foliage over the top of the sky, I'd be in trouble. I'd have just a muddy mess. So this way, it's, it's everything's still really, really thin. And I have the opportunity, you know, when I need to, I can press harder up here. Okay. I'm going to switch over here to something a little warmer for this. And then I have this, this foliage that's in here. It's kind of in the middle. And then some lights down in here. It's I, what I'm doing is not exact. I'm not trying to paint exactly what I see. I'm trying to paint the character of what's what this is more than anything else. And the the kind of movement gestural feel of it. And it starts to come together. So these are straight back here. Got the lighter back here. Got some lights back in here. I want that lacy feel. It's so beautiful. Um, over here, it's a little denser, and I think that that's neat. If it's darker over here, then this gets to be a little more interesting. little darker down in here. I think I'm going to move to some brown. Down right in here there's I don't think that's that that nice. It's, there I'm going to head to some Terry Ludwig's for over here. 
more of eggplant rather than brown brown. So thanks to some of the people in the chat for helping answer uh, some frequently asked questions like oh which yeah brands, yeah uh, oh yeah uses, things like that. Thanks. A yeah lot for that. yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for the people on the chat that um, answer some of the questions. We really appreciate it. That way it keeps me painting and um, keeps me moving. So here's a good question. Do you ever do, uh, do you ever have videos, uh, video of painting that you are doing without narration at all, just so we can see the fully uninterrupted process? I, I, I don't do, do that. Um, um, I, I, I certainly could do that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't usually do that because people kind of, um, you can see, you can see, I have some YouTube videos of some smaller pieces quick, but I don't usually, you know, post like long form things of me, um, painting. Um, but I, you know, I could certainly, um, think about that. Yeah, because when I'm painting, if it's just, if I'm left to my own devices, uh, I'm painting in the studio by myself, um, it's different. It definitely is different. i am um, got my music jamming, and I am um, uh, in, a, in a different kind of zone, for sure. You know, de definitely it's a different thing. And so this now here, I'm just layering some more grayed grasses. So you guys, I'm really thin here, so I, I can afford to get lots of layers in. If I've just gone too hot and heavy and thick, I can't get these layers in. I'm starting to get a nice quality of, of light and it's pretty. Now there's some dark um, trees in here that I, I want to say something about. There's this kind of thing going on. There's some dark branches too that I'll want to um, include. Now I, I, I do wish I must say, I do wish that I had the green paper. I think I'm fighting the red just a, a little bit. Just a little. It's okay. I don't, I don't mind. That's too light. But it's kind of coming together. There's a lot, wor lot of work to be done <laughs> on this, but um, I, I'm happy with the, the quality of light. Now I could go in and try to get some little negative painting to get some of those little little um, leaf shapes. Now that would be where the the green paper could come in really handy because I wouldn't have to work very hard to get green leaves in here. Oh, my neighbors stopped their lawn work. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> There's people that really like their chainsaws around here. So another mm -hmm. question. Uh, do you ever mm -hmm. just let the, pa the color of the paper uh, shine through? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I like working on toned paper, and I, I like letting the paper come through.
So let's see. I want something over here. I want um, I want these also to be a little more. This is a little got a little bit of a funky shape. That's okay. And then this one I want straighter. And then these. Okay. It's pretty colorful. That's for sure. I'm not sure that's quite right. Maybe it's not bad. Um, um, maybe I want something like that. And um, I want to get this foliage right here before I do anything um, more with this guy. Also, um, what is your thought process on deciding what color paper to use? Oh, well, today was because that's what I had in the drawer, and I'm getting low, and I'm, I need to um, call Dakota and get some more. Um, I, w I wanted today to use something more green, but I also was very, the, my priority today was scale, size. I wanted something bigger. So this is what I had that was bigger. And so I went with it, even though the color wasn't exactly what I wanted. So, you know, to me, um, the color of the paper, I know a lot of people ask me that all the time. That, oh, what, why, why do you choose? And, you know, very often it is because of, um, you know, what I've, what I've got, um, very often, um, because I'm going to paint. I'm not going to stop, I'm not going to not paint because, oh, I don't have the right color. I'm not ever going to do that. I'm going to paint with what I've got every single time. Um, so if, if the color isn't exactly right, um, I'm going to go for it anyway. Painting, painting is the priority. In my mind, it is. So yeah, it's starting to have some of that sparkle that I want. Let's come over here and get some of this other over here so we can really see what's happening with that quality of light as it spills into the scene. Get some sky holes here and there. And it starts to have that almost like um, a, a stained glass look to it. This kind of thing has that. down through here. So that this sweep of that light. So um, why didn't you tone the paper if it wasn't the color that you wanted? Oh, um, another piece. Um, Um, I guess I could have, but I, you know, I, 
I guess I could have. Here's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. uh, can you touch on using, quote, unexpected color to create, quote, punch in your paintings and why that works, i.e., a red and green foliage or purple and green blue water? What makes that work? Unexpected. So a lot of times um, I'm going to be driven by um, um, what I see initially and then I'm, if I see so something in a painting that it's lacking, like it's thirsty for something, um, that would be for me what I would do next. Um, I think unexpected color to me is more, um, um, I can't think, <laughs> I, can't t I can't answer that question at that moment. Um, that's a tough question. I push color. I like. I'll see something, and I'll I'll go. Oh, if if there's an excuse for me to use a certain color, like oh, okay, I'll jump on that. Um, so you know, like right now, there's definitely an excuse for me to use aqua. I love aqua. I think it works a lot of times. I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna do it. Um, I'm gonna use that license. Some of it is what I know. Some of what is w what I feel, um, some of it's, you know, it's all of that, right? So uh, Ursula would like you to touch on vibrating edges. So oh yeah, similar. vibrating e edges. That's so whenever there's a spot where light meets shadow is a great opportunity for, um, for any, you know, painting is to, you know, bring color because if you stare if you go out and you know you look at your lawn and you look at um, where where the shadow meets the edge of the lawn there's this you know you stare at it and it, it vibrates because the intensity of color is really happening right there where the shadow meets the light and we want to paint that that's not that's not something that's not there that's there and um, we can, you know, exaggerate it, yeah. Again, it's that thing of, like, m exaggerating it and um, is, is maybe, maybe different than, than painting it. So now you can see that this starts to have that really, it's cool. Now, now I've got enough here. I'm starting to get enough here that I can start to f play and um, really, I, I had to adjust things. I had to get some more lights in here. I was a little hesitant to go too light right down in here um, because I was worried about the sky, but now I'm not. So, um, now I can come back into the sky if I want and get things even uh, lighter up in here if I want. And oops, I don't like that. Um, but I can start to get this sort of tracery up in here. So edges, yeah, edges, edges, edges are, you know, so much of what we're painting is right on the edge. Okay, let's play with these guys a little bit because I want some more, I want some more color in these. These aspens, so that's going to give me a little bit more quality of light. There's a there's some there's light coming in here. Yeah. 
there's, uh, it, it's interesting, there's light coming here, but there's also some light coming, there's reflected light on this side. So Laura commented that the uh, mark making in the sky looks a little heavier to her. Uh, are you yeah, it is. I'm pressing, I'm pressing harder now because I'm confident with that, um, the, the value up there. Um, I, I, I can't, it, I know it's going to be the lightest thing in my, in my, in my piece, right? It it's just is. So it's okay. I can, I'm, all right, I'm going to press harder. It's okay. And um, I, know, I know what I want up there. All right. I don't have, I, there's nothing wrong with going in with some heavy marks, but I'm going to do that when everything else is sort of figured out, when I know that that's, that's what, I, what I want there. Like this is pretty, you know, strong, but I think this is right now. This is the right value right in there. Let's get those, I want to get that this in because I think that'll look cool. I'm going to go back to my blue spruce a little bit here and get, get these in. just that kind of layered back in here. Those darks, and just um, action of them. And then the darks on here. So all of those are those Darks are related. It's all over here, but it's related to these over here. And it starts to be a good. Now, Terry. I need some more darks. <laughs> I need to call Terry. There. It's my last little piece. Oh no. And I don't I'm going to have to call Jeff because I don't know what that is. And I'm going to have to figure it out because I love this this dark. I love it. Now, I want over, over that, so on this piece, uh, the color, the, the vibrancy, the intensity of the color, I've definitely pumped it up. It's not, um, I'm not trying to be exactly um, what I see in the reference. And there's that first, that's the first time I've touched it. I'm actually not that happy that I did. That's okay. There's some, I love these layers. And then now I need to go in here and get some more of these lights. And I need to wipe off my hands. OK. 
Okay. Yeah, right, right down in here, there's really beautiful light lights. I really want to get. I'm talking about color on the edge. There's a sort of um, right in here. There's really vibrant, um, almost very, very bright color on the edge. I can't. I keep going. I keep going. I want it brighter. Someone commented that that this has a very abstract feel. Yeah, it does. It's and it's not surprising that it would feel that way because the it this is a very, you know, it's got a lot of complexity and it doesn't really have a focal point per se um as much as um it's um so yeah, it does have a very um abstract sort of um tracery kind of feel to it, like a stained glass window and it looks like that. Also, Lori um, asks if you're blending at all. I'm, I'm, okay, so yes and no. I'm not blending with my finger. Uh, you know, I haven't really touched it. But I am blending by pushing one pastel into one layer of pastel into another. So yeah, there's that definitely going on. So yeah, there is blending, but it's not mechanical. You know, it's more putting, pushing one into another and that you know for me that's usually sufficient I do not um, usually find the need to blend with my finger also um, how do you avoid getting the lights of the skies dirty with the other colors that are already on the canvas yours look very clear okay so that's the thing so the the question about um, the, the, the sky being a heavier application. So the sky is heavier because what's here is thin. And so it's easy for me to get the sky on without it looking muddy. Now, if I, if I came along and I did either thick, thick sky and then tried to get the foliage over the top, I'd have mud. If I did the opposite, if I did thick, thick, um, foliage and tried to get this sky in between there I'd have mud so I make I plan for the shapes of the foliage put a thin application in just enough so that I can see the value relationships and then I can go in and get the the sky and you know anything that I need to thick but that's not until I've already established the shapes and that's why, like right here, I'm getting the sky in thick. Well, I can do that because the, this right here, the, the foliage, it's thin. So it's not that hard to go and press hard and, and get it in there. Even over here where the, the, it's dark, I can still get the sky in pretty clean because it's not, nothing's thick. Nothing's very thick at all. So I have plenty of opportunity to get that in nice and um, clean looking without it, you know, turning to mud. So that stain thin is really key. What, what time is it? Do we have any time? Just about 1257. Oh, wow. I'm doing pretty good. I'm surprised. Wow, okay. I'm actually kind of shocked. I'm not further along. Okay. I did okay. <laughs> On the okay. okay. So 
so this would, you know, if I were to pull this guy to a real, you know, finish point, I would want to spend a lot of time um, just designing the shapes and playing with the shapes and um, playing with the edges, uh, making sure that I had this rhythm that I want in, in the piece, um, all of that good stuff. I like some of these dark tree trunks, so I might try to get you know some of those in there. There's a couple because I think that they're a nice counter to you know something like this, a couple of these kinds of things in here. So um, Mary Jane comments mm -hmm. that you love the Terry Ludwig blue spruce and eggplant, but blue spruce is a new pastel, correct? Yeah, blue spruce is a new pastel. But eggplant is, of course, Terry Ludwig. Yeah, the, the, there's an egg, you know, I, I don't know what he calls it. Um, I call it eggplant. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know what he calls it. It's just one that I, you know, like. Also, yeah. too, uh, Tina wants to know, if, do you always save the foreground for last? Well, so I didn't. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to, so this foreground, it's not going to, I'm not going to have a lot of detail there. It's not the story. So actually the, the detail, um, is, I'm not going to be putting l little flowers. I might get some more texture in there, but I'm not going to be, um, yeah. So when, uh, um, just because something has some detail in the foreground doesn't mean we have to paint it. Um, that's not what my painting is about. So, um, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, this foreground's fairly, you know, not too bad. What, what I, where I want you to look is here. I gotta work on that, actually. There's some, right, right in there. That's, that's the, that's the sweet spot. And no, there, there's actually in a painting, there's no place that I really like ne necessarily leave for last. In fact, I really want the whole thing to be sort of coming up together because I don't want any one spot to be um, disconnected. So I, I'm trying to bring it up as a unified whole. So I'm trying to m move around as much as I can. Uh, sometimes you get, you get sucked into a spot and that's not, you know, usually that's not good. <laughs> usually it doesn't um, help you out. Usually if you get sucked in, you're, you, get, um, you get start picking on something and then when you start picking and perseverating on a spot, then you're usually not, it's not going to serve you. So when I find that I don't know what I want to do in a certain spot, if I'm unsure, I move to another spot. So I think I know the answer to this question. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you find one brand of lights more or less preferred than another brand? Brand of lights. Right. Yeah, because I mean, I, the darks, you always talk about Terry Ludwig's darks being really great. Yeah. Is there one brand of lights that really sticks out? or? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think so as much. Um, I, I really, um, I, I like Unison. Um, but I, I don't know that I like them for their lights necessarily so much. Terry just, I just think he has some of the, you know, prettiest darks on the market. I just, you know, kind of hands down. And um, so now I'm just having fun picking out some things that I want. And, I would spend some time adjusting some of that stuff and maybe softening some edges 
Um, this middle ground is sort of bothering me. I'm going to have to do something with it. But. Um, and are, are you going to get to a little bit of the foreground? A few people have mentioned that. Are you going to are you going to touch it up at all? Or? Um, you mean I could? I mean, there's a few things that I would do, but I, I'm not. I'm not going to get into doing those those, you know, that much. It's again, it's not a. I mean, it would be more like this kind of thing. Um, a, a little bit of texture. Um, you know, I could come in and, and do some, get some negative shapes for the grass, like that. See, this is actually drawing the, these grasses. Just playing with the shape of that foreground. I mean, you, 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 you could, you know, come in with something like this for the, the flowers, but I, I don't know. I don't know that that's that. I mean, it might be good. But I wouldn't. You know, it'd be something like that. Let's see. So how's that, <laughs> you guys? Yeah, I guess that gives it a little you know, polish to it. I mean, uh, you know, I guess so. Like some. It's just some mark making to give it. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Rachel comments that it's mm -hmm. always hard to know when to stop. Oh yeah, it's hard to know when to stop. Um, I think, you know, I this painting to me isn't done, but the thing with stopping right now, this is a good time in, in when I'm looking at this, this is a good time to stop. It's a good time to go, okay, now, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to look at it in, um, you know, maybe tomorrow, maybe in an hour, and say, what, what do I want to do? What, what more do I want to say? If I'm going to say more, is it going to improve it? Is it going to help? Um, does it need help? Um, do I like it the way it is? All, all of that. Um, taking a little break is, is a good thing. Also, um, uh, what do you do with your demo paintings when finished? Well, I like to sell them. <laughs> um, yeah, I sell the demos and I sell um, pieces. Actually, I'm going to be putting, posting some um, demos from my lessons from year one because I'm going to be getting ready to launch year two. I mean, I post those on daily paintworks. And yes, this is for sale. Um, yeah, and I usually sell my demos when I do live workshops, which, boy, live workshops, that's going to be, you know, hard to, um, what's going on there. But, yeah, so, yep, demos are for sale. All right. 
I think I will take a break. I think this is good. I think there's a lot, lot here to dig into, a lot to play with. I'd want to, again, like look at what, did I get that interval thing? Did I do what I wanted to do? Did I get the intervals? Did I get the quality of light? I think I kind of did get the quality of light. Um, do, do I want to play with some edges? How did that red work out for me? Eh, it's okay. It's, it, you know, I made it work is what I feel like. Um, um, yeah, I'm happy with it. I've, it has some energy to it, which I like. That part I like. I like some of this right there. Um, so there's a couple spots that I like. That's okay if you like, particularly like a spot. But the thing when you have a spot, some that you you can't get married to a spot either. You have to. Well, maybe that's got to go in the. You know, if I were to come back, I don't think so. But sometimes that's the case. But yeah, one more thing I want to do, just here. Yeah, I like that. Just, that's fun. All right. Okay, you guys, I did have a request to do a live stream on the weekend. And I'll, I'm not sure whether I can pull that off or not. But we'll see if we can do that in the next you know, couple weeks or so. We'll try to, try to do it on the weekend for you. So, Because I know there's some people that are still still out, out there working and um, that's great. Um, anyway, thanks for checking in and watching and um, I, I will see you guys soon. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and be sure to wait for um, the watercolor sketching workshop. It's going to be coming out really soon and um, the monthly pastel painting lessons online are um, going to be um, the year two is coming out soon, but you can still go to the website paintinglessonswithmarla.com and check out what we've got going there. So appreciate you guys watching. And if you're if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so. We really appreciate it. All right. Can you put a mat on that real quick? Oh gosh, I can try. We've got, I've got some L's. That's the best I can do. I don't have a, I don't have a big mat. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't quite have it. No, it doesn't quite do it justice. But let's see. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's kind of big. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's got a neat. It's got a neat quality. Definitely different, but I like this kind of thing. All right, guys. Really nice. And I read your questions, so I'll try to answer questions on a separate video or on the next live stream. All right, you guys. See you soon. Bye. What? Yeah, okay. All right.